From Relay FM, this is Upgrade, episode 476 for September 12th, 2023. Today's episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN and Fitbud. My name is Mike Hurley, and I'm joined by a man who's just returned from the Steve Jobs Theater, Mr. Jason Snow. Hi, Jason. <gasps> more driving through San Francisco, more all of that. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm fine. Appreciate you getting in and out, yep. in and out real fast Oof. so we can out of there. get our reactions and thoughts and from you some hands-on impressions yes from the iphone mm-hmm. event iphone slash apple watch event but we will start this episode jason as we always do with a snow talk question uh, we had a number of listeners write in about this and i'm going to take this question from both ron and chris who wanted to know jason what sandwich did you have on your way home today now i'm thinking there are two lineages for this question yes one is that you referenced that you would uh, be having a sandwich before we record it. And then also going back to WWDC where you were unhappy with the sandwich oh, options that's, provided. that's true. I did notice I, mm-hmm. I uh, went past the food in the press uh, area and it was also similarly kind of weird apple food. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate the Upgradians who picked up my little note about having a sandwich on my way back here. Uh, because I do, I do that. Uh, there's a sandwich place. It's called Alada's. It's um, it's in, near where Dan Frakes lives. Don't be creepy, and um, it's just it's like a deli, and it it's really good. And I go there, and generally I get the hot roast beef sandwich because it's really good, and I eat it hot. while I'm driving home. Yeah. yeah. I had a, a hamburger, beef burger, cheeseburger. Okay. Not all of those. One of those. It was the cheeseburger. Cheeseburger and fries cheeseburger for dinner. And fries. Oh. Tonight. All right. Yeah, so you're p- strange. You're full of energy fine. now. I wouldn't say that uh, okay. necessarily. It's half past ten at night right now. For All me. right. I am drinking a Coke Zero. Yep. Me too. A little bit. Hey, Coke Zero buddies. Like, I, in the fridge, I got the Coke Zero and I got a Red Bull. And if I have a Red Bull now, like it will get me through, but, but it's not going to be later. good. No. Like the energy that it provides is like a very different type of energy that i try to avoid Uh, will only really go for in certain circumstances okay um and i feel like i have sufficient energy to get us through today's episode because i'm excited to talk to you about uh what was announced if you would like to send in a snow talk question of your own just go to upgradefeedback.com and you can send in a snow talk question for us to answer in a future episode of the show Let's start out today's episode by looking at the draft results. Must we? Results. Must we? I would say, yeah, we really yeah, should. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we should. You uh, killed it. You mm. got nine out of ten correct in the main pick mm-hmm. area and won the St. Jude Challenge, which also means that it's six points for Mike, five points for Steven. You get one extra point in your challenge yeah. against Steven, Um but to to briefly go through it, because I yep. don't want to dwell on it for obvious reasons. I would I wouldn't mind dwelling on it like at least a little. Bit. Uh, well, that's that's what I'm you giving know. you is I'm just giving you just the bare <laughs> amount of dwellage for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I could just say, well, it's it's ten it's ten seven, goodbye everybody, and and that would be it. So in the iPhone round, you uh, killed it. You got all five right. USB C, uh, new camera, dynamic island on all models. Uh, new design touted for the Pro Phones, and a new color option on a Pro Phone. I got four out of five perfectly respectable. Um, titanium on a phone, three nanometer chip only in the high-end model. A Pro Phone with a new piece of software, a camera feature that other phones don't have. You had that whole 35, mm-hmm. 22 millimeter, all the different millimeter equivalent toggles. And there were, it actually showed there's an indicator about what format it's, it's uh, shooting in as well that is not in the current builds of the OS. So there, there are a couple things oh, going on there. Take okay. it from me, the That's guy cool. who has to update a book about photos. Uh, oh, um, yeah. And I got the action yeah, button. There's quite a lot for you, actually, as well, Yeah, right? there's a lot of stuff the, in there. Yeah, we'll yeah. get to it. Uh, the action button as well, but I missed on the color-matched USB-C cables. I just thought that, that would be a nice I'm thing. I'm surprised but, about that, I'm, to be honest, because there was so much smoke I know, about this. right? Not, uh, so I've there. come down personally that they were just photos of the USB-C cables From the iMac. of iMacs, yep. and they Fished were just passed off. In yep. uh, Apple Watch, so so you won that by one. I took the Apple Watch by one, unfortunately only worth mm-hmm. two. Um, I said no new health-related sensors and new Apple Watch Ultra hardware. Just adding a color to the original Apple Watch Ultra doesn't count. There was an Ultra 2. You said the Ultra will come in a different color option. 
sadly, I can't believe this. I honestly, Mike, I was right on the fence of like, will I buy an Ultra Two? And I was sitting there thinking, show it in black, show it in black, show it in black. They didn't show it in black, folks. I can't believe how little they actually added to this device. Like that they did a, a version two, and they seemingly added like not a lot to the Apple Watch Ultra, just the internals. And didn't add another color. Yeah, like that is really surprising. Maybe, to maybe me. all of their vapor deposition machines for titanium were being used on iPhones, and they couldn't maybe apply maybe. that to that. But you did get the Series Nine featuring a new system on the chip with more f- performance, and that leaves yeah. us to my favorite section, the other picks, and my favorite section. Uh, I did me wrong, or I did it wrong, because uh, you got them right. AirPods Pro USB-C case, uh, visit to the chip lab and the rainbow stage. Whereas I got the video of Apple devices saving lives is shown. It was the first thing in the in the uh, event, so I was very excited by that. Unfortunately, that was by the way, yes. that was a really good one. That was like it a, was a very effective mm-hmm. one. Uh, again, like I feel like maybe the the tagline of it kind of pulled a little too hard in a way that wasn't necessary like of like yeah birthday they never thought they'd see yeah, it's like, all right oh. no we got that like you didn't need yeah, to, yeah. to like mm-hmm. un- like draw four but rem- underlines remember on last year they had like a kid go back to the same the scene of the plane crash she was in yeah and i'm like yeah. mm, maybe don't do that anyway what i got wrong yeah. is uh i thought they would mention one of those air- cool airpods modes i thought they would have had a little more lip service to the airpods they didn't they did show a mode no. but it was the mode for voice can for noise cancellation when you're on a call a phone call mm. not the same i i'm not going to even argue for it that's not what I, pe- I meant and similarly i said Lionel messi appears his name appears but his face does not appear and i don't i did not intend for that choice to involve the text of his name i thought you would see him and uh we didn't see him and so that that's enough for you to take it right there because that's two down t- to me with only one to play, the St. Jude Challenge, where we were trying to put points down on things said in this uh, video. Uh, aerospace grade was mentioned not in the context I expected, which was titanium, but for aluminum. Yes. Uh, I, I got so I, got I guess four. they've got what like rover grade titanium. They do. I guess. They do have <laughs> rover grade titanium. Mars <laughs> interplanetary grade titanium. So I got four, and you got two for aerospace grade. Uh, you got four, and I got one for breakthrough because they did say breakthrough. Uh, they did mm-hmm. not name Bionic uh, in the name of the new chip, and that was enough to decide that one by one point to you, which means you will go up on Steven by one point in the St. Jude Challenge, and the final score there. Mm-hmm. Ten for Mike, seven for me. I remain the challenger. And uh, good news, everybody, I got the tiebreaker. Hmm. <laughs> this is that last bit that you really need. Yeah. Uh, I've got to say, I do feel robbed from Apple for not getting four marks because they should have done a color in the Apple Watch Ultra. Like, not just for the draft, but, like, that should have happened, and I could have got four marks, but I will say, I feel pretty good. About nine out of the ten possible Pretty picks. good choice, yeah. I, I, I In feels, hindsight, I just good. decided to go a little too entertaining with my other, and uh, that was not good. I would I would yeah. much rather have lost this um, ten nine. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, yeah. Uh, and been like, oh, it's just because the bionic name change and all that. But um, that's not I, I lost a fair and square all the way through. Uh, Stephen and I did a little calculation there in the in the Steve Jobs Theater. And we agreed that by the most generous and least generous methods, you beat me. So. So yes. it is. So it is decided. I think I'm pretty I feel pretty confident that I won the year. Yeah, I think so. There might be another event, but I'm not maybe, sure. Maybe, maybe not, but it won't matter because you're up two nothing. Um, and uh, yeah, you might be you might be in line to be like the Grand Emperor of all Relay FM keynote related games. If you're, uh, we'll find out. I don't know. If, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of coin flipping on Connect. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. Be. Yeah, that's, that's you be. need somebody to coin, flip a coin over there. We have apps for that. Oh, okay. I'm available. I'm sure you are. <laughs> Sure you are. Uh, you mentioned in a few a few times there about St. Jude Challenge, um, and that is because throughout the month of September here at Relay FM, we are joining together with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, because September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. We have been raising money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital since 2019. We have raised... 
I mean, we started out before we started this year, we raised $2.2 million as a community. So far this year, we have raised over $260,000. We are aiming for $2.5 million overall. So we are, we're like nearly 90% of our fundraising goal that we set. Um, and so we are so thankful for the support so far. But there is still a lot of September to go where you can donate and you can get involved. St. Jude won't stop their life-saving work until no child dies from cancer. So we're not going to stop throughout all the month of September. Because with your support, we'll be one step closer to that day, one cure closer, one child closer. St. Jude is headquartered in Memphis. Where actually, I'm going to be in Memphis later on this week. Jason's going to be in Memphis next week. Mm-hmm. We're going to be there on the, like working at the podcast at the time, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But even though St. Jude is headquartered in Memphis, it has a global impact. St. Jude has tra- treated children from all 50 states of the U.S. and all around the world. About 90% of children with cancer live in low- and middle-income countries. This is why St. Jude have launched St. Jude Global to ensure that every child with cancer and other catastrophic diseases have access to quality care and treatment no matter where they live. Where you live in the world should not dictate your access to care. St. Jude Global shares knowledge, technology, and expertise of healthcare institutions around the world, researchers, and fundraisers too, to improve survival rates in their home countries. For example, they train the doctors and researchers of tomorrow, host conferences and share skills, and help nonprofit foundations raise awareness and build sustainable sources of revenue to support children in their countries of cancer and other blood disorders. Today, St. Jude collaborates with more than 280 partners in St. Jude Global, representing more than 70 countries and growing. That is amazing. They do all this research. But what they are doing this research for is to help children who are suffering with cancer. And who does not want to support that work? We don't want to see any children die of cancer. That is St. Jude's mission. And I, I think we can all agree with it. Because of the incredible and like just um, overwhelming generosity of our community over the last five years, we have raised so much money and we are so thankful for that. And we want your support to this year as well to support the life-saving mission of St. Jude. The fifth annual podcast-a-thon is fast approaching. It is going to be live on Friday, September 22nd from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern. That is 12 hours. Ugh. We are doing 50% more for Podcast-a-thon 5, but we need your help to raise as much money before that day, during that day, and after that day. You go to stjude.org slash relay. You can donate there yourself. You can sign up to fundraise. Fundraising makes an amazing difference. You're able to donate whatever you're able to donate. And that is incredible. But if you are set up a fundraising campaign, you can make a donation to it. But you can also share it with your friends, your family, your community, your colleagues. Ask them to make any amount of don- any donation you're able to encourage somebody else to make after signing up for your own fundraiser is money that St. Jude would not have otherwise seen. So it is a way to make your money go even further Please go and find out more about that at stjude.org slash relay. If you sign up for fundraising and you raise money there, we have some really cool exclusive Relay Fan merchandise. You've got to go see it, stjude.org slash relay. If you make a donation of your own, please click the blue search employer button on the donation summary page to check if your employer offers a matching gift program because, again, this can make your money go even further. So that is stjude.org slash relay to donate and find out more about fundraising. St. Jude won't stop until no child dies from cancer. With your support, we'll be one step closer to that day. One cure closer, one child closer. This month and every month, let's cure childhood cancer together. I had a, a just a moment of, of serendipity there where, as I'm reading this, I saw Stephen's cursor in the St. Jude Google Doc that we have which means he's probably also reading it on Mac Power They're users, doing Mac Power they're users also recording right now. now. Yeah. So me and Steven just like, we just joined forces in that moment mm-hmm. to, you, to raise money. For that's right. That's, that's what happened. It is the season. I have a B-Tails. It's the B-Tails. B-Tails are back. I have some B-Tails for you. Oh, this is dates. Yes. This is dates more than anything else. iOS and iPad OS, September 18th. So that's next okay. Monday. Sure. So you know what we're talking about next week. Mm-hmm. Watch OS September eighteenth. Mm-hmm. Mac OS September twenty sixth. Oh god! Whoa! Oh calm no! Down. No. Apple, what are you doing? No. All in September. No, no, no. Unbelievable. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> I, you, I didn't just give you this information, did I? Uh, yeah. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. The burden, <laughs> I'm so sorry. The burden uh, the, that it falls upon me, knowing that I have to turn the Mac OS review around in that short amount of time. When I, I was hoping for more, but, you know, I'll do it. I'm tough. I'll, I will I'll make say, it happen. Look, developers, developers, uh, 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 writers, developers. Uh, developers, 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 writers, writers, writers. I, I'm I'm sorry. I know this sucks for you. Mike Hurley is just user of technology. I'm happy that macOS is coming so soon to iOS. Like it annoys me when it's yes, like when it's six out of sync. It's the worst. I oh I agree. I just uh, you just don't want to. I, deal I just with it. don't. I, mm, I just well yeah. That's just a lot of content in a short amount of time. Well, that but think think yep. about how much time I'll have on my hands in October. Think about that. That's great. So much time. Great news, everybody. My October is yep. clearing up because it's all oh, in also, September. Did you know that? There's iPhone. There's an iPhone in the middle. Oh. Of that as well, Jason. I don't know if <laughs> you might have to do an iPhone review in the middle of all of that. I mean, maybe. Oh, and by the way, you come into Memphis. <laughs> you know what? I- oh boy, yeah. I feel bad for you right now. Mm. Uh, release candidates are out now for all of this stuff. I saw. So uh, I watched the keynote today with uh, CGP Gray and underscore David Smith. They came over to Mega Studio and we hung out and watched it together. Um, and afterwards, Underscore was trying to submit Widget Smith. Uh, he was just sitting there and trying to submit it, and it wasn't working. But I think now uh, developers are able to submit their apps, which is really helpful. Hooray. Um, I'm sure that, you know, there are some big stuff this year. I think like stuff like widgets and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure people want to know that we're all good, you know, uh, with the with the stuff. That, oh, it's all submitted. Underscore has confirmed that it has been submitted. So that's good. Good luck to Widget Smith. Good luck to all apps that have been submitted. Uh, and I was actually quite surprised that Vision Pro got a couple of call-outs mm-hmm. um, in the presentation. But one of them was talking about kind of how media and developers were all super excited, very happy, and underscoring again early next year for the Vision Pro. Yep. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. I don't know if you've heard, but streaming services like Netflix, they have tens of thousands of shows, but depending on where you are, you may only see some of these. It's almost like paying for a gym membership, but then only using one machine, like a treadmill. That's where ExpressVPN comes in, because you can change your online location with ExpressVPN to change where streaming services think you're located. They have almost 100 different server locations, so you can discover thousands of new shows to watch on Netflix, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, and more. This means you could watch Inception on Canadian Netflix, Top Gear on UK Netflix. Just open the app, select, open the ExpressVPN app, select different location from the one that you're in, tap a button to connect, Refresh the page or the app that you're using to get different content, and you can find new stuff. Now, I'm going to be as I'm going to be traveling in America next week. I'm going to be doing this. We have shows that we're watching on UK-based streaming services that just won't work when I'm overseas. So I'll be able to change my location back to the UK, refresh that application, and I'll be ready to go. And I can catch up on all the shows that I would otherwise just be building a backlog of. There are tons of reasons to choose ExpressVPN over other VPNs, and there's reasons why I have chosen them. The blazing fast speeds, which means you can stream in HD with zero buffering, is compatible with all of your devices, phones, laptops, smart TVs, and more. And ExpressVPN has the added benefit of encrypting your data so you can browse the web securely. So make the smart choice and stop paying full price for streaming services while only gaining access to a fraction of the content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash upgrade. That's expressvpn.com slash upgrade to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Our thanks to ExpressVPN for the support of this show and Relay FM. Uh, let's start by talking about the iPhone 15 Pro. Just go to the top. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. This is, you know, obviously there's the most to say here. Uh-huh. Um, and there'll be things that we'll cover here. Maybe there'll be things that we just cover as part of the iPhone 15. But the biggest thing, mm, I, I expect probably the biggest thing, the thing that will probably make the most impact is if the new design feels like a new design. Mm-hmm. So considering you've seen and held yes. these devices. Indeed. Can I get some impressions from you on this? Yeah, it. I don't know if I wouldn't say that it looks different. It doesn't look different. Um, well, I mean, okay, the colors look different, and they, because they are doing this titanium oh, shape. Wait, thing. there are colors. I had no idea. Well, that there were colors well, there's a devices. sort of like slightly blue titanium and a slightly black titanium and a slightly more silvery gray titanium and a slightly grayer titanium. Um, yeah, they're they're real Just the pale. Names, real quick. 
black titanium, white titanium, blue titanium, natural titanium. Yeah. It's just like I think white titanium again, like, was like a villain in on? Marvel Comics in the nineties. <laughs> So, I'm gonna Google that. Uh, no, what's a white white tiger? I, uh, okay. t- white Titan? I don't know. Anyway, white tiger is a is black a, is titanium a was in the Super Friends in the 70s. Oh, see, I did a different okay. version of that now same joke. Okay. Um, that was black black lightning. But um, yeah, it is. I mean, the blue titanium looks like midnight. Uh, right, it looks like my midnight uh, MacBook Air. That's what it is. It is incredibly dark, oh. but with a blue tint. That's what it looks okay. like. Uh, and the black one looks straight up like a like a black iPhone, and then there is the natural, which Stephen Hackett was really excited by because it, it does look really good. It is it is uh, metallic gray. There's no doubt about it, but it's a very nice uh, metallic gray. Um, and if you're excited about seeing a gray phone, as Stephen Hackett was, then uh, good on you. Um, I, I don't think it looks very different at a glance. You know what's different about it? is pick a one up because that is where it is very different it really is very different like i read all these stories about like it's it's you know 10 percent lighter five to ten percent lighter whatever it was and it is it's 10 percent lighter i just picked it up and i have been using a 13 pro for the last year primarily i picked it up and it's like whoa like so many things going on there. One, absolutely not, tr- not a matter of trivia, right? Not like, oh yeah, it's lighter by a small number of grams and that no one will ever notice. No, it's like just immediately when you pick it up, you're like, ooh, this is a lot lighter. It is. It feels much more pleasant to hold it than it does the uh, the 14 Pro, which has that stainless steel frame and is much heavier. But on top of that, then you've got the edges. the The edges are a little bit, you know, smoother, cur- curvier, um, and so it, it's a little more pleasant to hold it in that way. So that's nice too. And and that's when you when you're holding it, you, the thing you might not notice at least at first, cause it's subtler, but it is absolutely there is it's also a little bit smaller. So it's, I think l- the lightness is the thing that is the primary thing you will notice. But I like the fact that Apple, when they, they used, as we have been talking about in the rumor roundup, they have a new process that they didn't talk about at all that allowed them to bring the edges of the screen in. And what they've done, every time they've done something like that in the past, it feels like they've said, great, we can make the screen bigger. And mm. and I don't know if that's actually the case, but that's what it feels like. It's like Apple's priority was always make the screen bigger. And they made the they made the uh, the computer, or the, in this case, the phone smaller. Um, what like they did on the iPad Pro, right? They, I think the iPad Pro was an was that it, or did they make the screen bigger? No, they made it they made it smaller. So it's 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 a good choice because it means that the phone is smaller. Um, but the lighter is the thing that I think is going to be the biggest change um, because it it is appreciably like palpably lighter. So I did some rough calculation and the 14 pro is about 10 percent lighter and the pro max is around uh eight percent lighter so i mean it's uh, that doesn't honestly it doesn't mean anything um unless you get an answer like what you've just given right like yeah that, that doesn't mean anything I, unless I, when you pick it up right i looked at like what's the difference in grams right and it, and the answer is well it's 30 what 29 grams Something like that. No, 19 grams. 19 grams. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of grams. That's 19 paper clips, right? But um, it's it's absolutely, you can tell. If you're somebody who has used the previous model and you pick it up, absolutely, you can tell that it's lighter. Um, it is a much more pleasant device to hold. I was not expecting that. I expected it to be sort of trivial. Um, I don't think at a glance it's going to be easy to tell that it's an iPhone 15 and i i wonder in the long run if that is going to be the thing that limits its you know that apple won't necessarily get a big sales spike like it often gets when it redesigns the phones because it doesn't feel like a re- yeah. redesign it really does it's a materials change but it really feels like a refinement of this existing design that's been around there for a little while yeah yeah i mean and it is that right like it definitely is that um, because it's the visuals, and I think maybe I don't know, maybe we're still even longer away from any significant yeah, change. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't even know, like how much can you really change now? Like I feel well, like it's when your design goal is to make it in some ways as featureless as possible. 
Yeah. <laughs> right? Where you're like, we're we taking the button off of it. And like, I think that that is sort of Apple's aesthetic is to make it less. I mean, they want it to be notable, but they, they also don't like like having stuff on their stuff. Right. They want to keep it super simple. So on that level. Yeah. I, I, I wonder how do you make an iPhone that looks like, oh, my God. The, the, well, like introducing interesting colors might be a way to do that but that that's not what they did here. So, uh it feels, you know, very much like an iPhone uh, Pro model, but I think it is definitely going in the right direction in terms of the the way it feels to pick it up because it's lighter and the titanium, you know, titanium has got that kind of texture on it um that I, I don't know if you can feel it but you can see it and it's very pleasant. It it feels almost more like a natural material, um, right? Stainless is is polished and perfect until you get your fingers all over it. And titanium has this has a texture to it that's really nice that I like. I, I have the can titanium watch. Can you feel watch, the so texture? I like it. I don't think you phone. can. I don't think I can. I couldn't. I didn't feel think the texture, so. No. But the reason why I thought is because like I thought like you can see it, right? Be like, oh look, it's going to be a brush texture, but then they PVD coat it, and I imagine exactly. that, that would remove a lot. Exactly. Of that doesn't texture. doesn't feel textured. Um. And that's an important point because we had been talking on this show for a while about the fact that you can anodize titanium. That's not what they did. It's PVD coated, which is a different process to get to the result of very restrained colors for this product. And that's, you know. Hey, maybe, right? We've ended up getting to where we thought we were going to get, but in a different path where it's like, I don't know. We'll find out from the material scientists now that I'm about to say this. Maybe you can't do as many color options for PVD. And so like anodizing, if they would have gone know. down that route, could have added more, but this this didn't. You know, you talking about this design, I was catching up on my podcast backlog so I, and I was listening yesterday to the episode of the talk show that you did. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few weeks ago, I think yeah. it was now. Um, and one of the things that you and John were talking about a lot was the 25th iMac anniversary thing. And you were making a lot of references, the two of you, to like the beige and you know white plastic products that were around before. And I kind of feel like metal texture, right, is that now? Right? That like something looking like a metal texture, whether it being the aluminium of a Mac or the colors of these pro phones or whatever. And like dishes or, you know, there's always uh, uh, exposed metal around the outsides or whatever. I kind of feel like that is where we are beginning to move towards. If we haven't already stepped over the line where it's like, that is just like the way a computer is supposed to look. And maybe it's a little bit boring. And I was thinking to myself, like, what is the iMac moment? I don't know, but like I'm wondering if there'll even be one. Yeah. Right. Like, is there? Is it possible for there to be an iMac G3 moment to happen to computers again from a visual departure? I, I really don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's like it needs a new device, right? Like maybe that's what it needs. Maybe it's because obviously the Vision Pro ain't it? Yeah. Because it still looks like all Apple's all other stuff. But I don't know. Maybe maybe it needs something completely new. Um. Did you did you uh, take action and click the action button? I did take action. I'm confused. I don't know if you can help me. I can. Is this a physically moving switch? It is. It is a button. Okay. It is a button so that you press. When I press that button, the button goes in. Yes. It does do that. It does okay. do that. And um, if you press it in a normal sort of like press, it doesn't do anything except bring up a little thing that's sort of like the, you know, the touch ID cue that points at the at the sensor and says touch here or the face id cue that points at the sensor and says look here or whatever it's like mm -hmm. that where it's actually it points at the button and says press and hold to do whatever it is to turn on or turn off or whatever so you're not going to be able to if you press it by accident um nothing happens you have to press and hold and then get a haptic and it's got the sort of like big, strong haptic for silent mode. It's like hmm. boot, boot, boot. And uh, when you come off of silent mode to noise mode, it, it does a single boop uh, haptic. Uh, but you can go to settings and there's a top level, I believe, setting for action button now. And in that top level setting, you can set it to camera or flashlight. Uh, you can set it to focus mode. 
pick a, and you can pick a focus mode and then that button will turn that focus mode on and off. You can have it run a shortcut. You can have it run accessibility features. All of those items are in play. And with shortcuts open, that means basically you can do almost anything. Um, but it's a press and hold that triggers it, not a, you know, accidental in your pocket pressing of the button. I am really intrigued to see how that feels in like long term usage because like a press and hold like i know why they're doing it i understand uh, how long i mean this is a stupid <laughs> question are you holding it for a long time like it's the difference between tap and press does that make sense right it's sort of like you, you it, gotta no, hold and it sense. goes boop, boop. whereas if you if you tap it just goes hey uh don't tap me you gotta press it that it, like literally it's pointing and saying no 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 don't do that so it's just a little bit longer to get it and then it and then it responds but it's not like hold it for three seconds or something it's it's short but it's not something that you're going to get by accidentally pressing it thinking it's the volume up weird mm, weird do you know what you would put on this i don't i don't I really don't know. It yeah, might be I camera. I think maybe do not disturb will be where I start. Yeah. Camera. I'm going to leave my phone all sounds off always all the time. Yes, anyway, absolutely. Kind of absolutely. The advantage of camera is that not, not only can you press and hold it to open the camera, but then you can just use that button to uh, sh do the shutter. Oh, can you? Mm-hmm. So that would, would that work anyway? I like that? don't know. Maybe. I didn't try that. But when it's set as camera, it absolutely is the shutter button, too. Well, that might be a nice nice thing to do with it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. A17 Pro. We were, on the last episode, talking about... Got to get rid of the Bionic name. doesn't make any sense. Right? Why we're still calling Chips Bionic. Because that just name doesn't make any sense. And so what they've done, I think, is something that just feels more confusing, which is name... The A17, the A17 Pro. Uh, okay, okay. It is confusing. All right, I have a lot of thoughts about this one. Get ready. Um, oh, I mean, on one level, in. on one level, I think this is a great choice because not only does Bionic not mean anything, but you're you're branding your chip with a Pro, just like you have an M1 and an M1 Pro. Now you have an A17 Pro. However, it all comes down to. What are your intentions toward this product yes. line, Apple? What yeah. are your intentions? Because what I wonder is if next year the base model iPhone will get a different chip. I wonder if what this is saying is next year it's going to be the A18 Pro and the A18 rather than the A18 Pro and the A17 Pro. Because it's weird if there's never a non-Pro for the A-series. But I wonder if what they're doing is tipping their cards a little bit that going forward they're going to do with iPhone chips what they've done to Mac chips, which is have it be a flexible enough design that they can just have it be the same architecture, but one of them be... Uh, be a lesser version of it. That would be Why very different call, from what they're doing now. Why not just call the A16 Bionic the A17? Like, does it matter? Uh, I guess you could, right? I don't think it matters. So like, maybe, why, maybe, why do we have, like, where's the regular oh, well, A16? I mean, that's, that's the, the other way. A17. That's the other way to go is, is if the A16 Bionic, I mean, yeah, you're right. But but then it's weird because you're like the a wait a second the a seventeen is the a sixteen bionic that's weird right to have two names for it yeah but like what happens next year that's the question like, do you think they're going to introduce every year two new chips I don't think they're going to do that I think they've shown they don't want to do that right like well I, I can't well, imagine that from the a eighteen year so they're like oh here's an a eighteen and a eighteen pro you say that and I get it in the sense that they've not they have not done it like this before but. This is how they do it on the Mac. This is how they do it on the Mac. They 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 do three different versions, four different versions of those Mac chips. And it does it gives me at least some pause 
to think that maybe what they've decided to do is keep all their new products going forward, not this year and last year with the iPhone, but going forward on the same chip generation and just have an you know an A whatever and an A whatever Pro for the two iPhone models. Yeah. The only I, difference I wonder, with the Mac though is they don't introduce the chips at the same time. I don't know if that makes a difference. I don't but know. But that's the thing they don't do. And I don't like know. so I don't know. So lots of questions, lots of questions yeah. because about the that are just based on the name because I like the parallelism of it, but I I and this year is fine, but next year, if there is an iPhone 16 with an A17 Pro chip in it and an iPhone 16 Pro with an A18 Pro in it, like I have to say, what is the pro why not just call it the a18 then why does it have pro yeah. in it if you're if the only chip is pro why is it pro it doesn't it doesn't make any sense so it maybe that's where we'll end up but i look at it and i think i could see a pathway as a person who's not a chip designer i could see a pathway forward where what they're doing here is auguring a, a change in their chip philosophy for the iPhone mm. going forward where there are two tiers and maybe that would that would uh that would even go to would that go to like iPads too I don't I don't know I don't know how that would work I would expect mm, yeah maybe I, I the things know. I agree with you like this seems like a perfectly viable like process I'm just not convinced they're going to do that well right cuz like cuz it seems like they've made in the past few years, some very particular decisions about what I, chips go where. I don't understand why you would call this pro if there's no A17. I don't know, and and that you would be pro that next year you would presumably be putting a pro chip in your non-pro phone. I don't like it. I don't like that idea. And so, if that's the case, this is a very weird decision. Um, if they're they're planning something different. Um, then okay, like so be it. That that would be it. Would certainly, honestly, from a marketing standpoint, it would be better to have the both phones have an A18 next year mm. instead mm. of a 17 and an 18. They could just both be A18. Uh, and even if it, I mean, even if it was like the scandal was A18 is actually A17 Pro. Uh, but but what if they bifurcate it? What if it it actually is a different chip? Um, that they're making that's got, you know, newer cores on an older process, or I, I don't know what that would be. Or are they designing this chip so that it's got, you know, what we talked about about chip design, where you're not physically like chopping the, the wafer, um, but you are designing one design, and then um, the simpler chip only gets like part of that design and the more complex chip gets the whole design and they put in that whole space, there's extra CPUs or extra GPUs or whatever. Like, is that what's going on here? So that next year the A18 could come out and there would just be more GPUs and cores and whatever else on the high-end one, or is that like completely ridiculous because in the end it's just a smartphone? Why are you differentiating your chips at this level? Uh, I just don't I just don't know why you would just have pro this and pro that. It doesn't follow. So I don't know. I mean, guess what? Good news is we're all gonna be debating this for a year <laughs> and not knowing the answer. So this chip is uh, three nanometers, which we were expecting. Mm -hmm. um, there's faster performance cores, better performance per watt on the efficiency cores, uh, two times neural engine. It supports USB 3 uh, with an optional cable at 10 gigabits per second. Apple were very excited about the GPU. Mm -hmm. um, Pro class, they called it. 20% faster, six cores, improved efficiency, enables ray tracing. And they were very excited about the games. What I will say, um, and I know that it seems hard sometimes to understand that people are playing like first-person shooter games on iPhones, but people do play first-person shooter games on iPhones. Like it's a thing. Like people play Call of Duty on their phone, like it, Fortnite on their phones. Like they do this stuff. Um, not on iPhones, but Fortnite on phones exists, and. They referenced a couple of console games that are coming to the iPhone, mm -hmm. and I was very surprised about this. Like one of them, which is um, Assassin's Creed. Uh, 
the new Assassin's Creed yeah. game. I've forgotten the name of it. But they kind of it is a simpler Assassin's Creed game, like that is in its design. It's going back a little bit to what uh, Mirage, I think, is the name. Is going back to kind of like the the the, the origins of the game. Mm-hmm. But it's coming out like towards the end of this year on PlayStation and Xbox. So the fact that they are bringing it to the iPhone, and I'm assuming an upcoming iPad, that's a surprise to me. Like. I, We'll s- mm-hmm. I will remain intrigued. Like I don't, and that means I it'll don't be play on the games Mac. that way. That'll, but it'll be do. on the Mac too, right? So you're getting all of Apple's platforms by doing that, yeah. presumably. Uh, yeah, because yeah. they're bringing Resident Evil Village, which is Apple's favorite game of all time. Well, right. Um, I think has won Game of the Year twice. There was one like two design awards or something yeah. funny like that. Resident Evil Village, but that's also coming to the iPhone along with the uh, Resident Evil Four remake, which came out earlier this year. Like, look. They are doing some interesting stuff. What does it say about a gaming strategy? I do not know, but I, they're doing some interesting things. I don't know. So I lean forward at this moment for sure. I don't know whether the GPU core is in the Mac. I think the GPU cores in the M series processors have just been the same ones. I don't think there's a new Mac GPU, right? So. I'd have to look it up, but I mean, that was what I immediately thought here is this is actually really interesting for the Mac because they they said, we're really proud of this new GPU core design we've got. And they're like, well, guess what? That's the M3 Mac GPU core design, presumably, yeah. right? Yeah. Which means that they're talking about some pretty huge boost they seem to very Mac excited. graphics power in the M3 yeah. generation too. Like they they seem very very excited about this right and and they were talking again a lot of the smarts sorry they were talking about how they're using a neural engine in comparison and how that helps with things like ray tracing like this is what the serious graphics cards are doing um, and so I am very intrigued to see if and how Apple are able to present an interesting case when it comes to GPUs. And like this could be the beginning of them being able to be much co- more competitive on gaming, because uh, I, I will tell you like the fact that they are pledging to bring games from this year to the iPhone. That's like so that they showed off at a game called The Division Mobile. That's that's always going to have been a mobile game, mm-hmm. right? But like the Resident Evil game and the Assassin's Creed game, that is a surprise to me. And so like I am very intrigued to see what that ends up looking like. But sure. they seem very excited by their GPU. Uh, let's talk about the cameras. So there's a bunch of interesting stuff going on. There's a lot so going like, on there. We got what we were expecting, right? Which is the optical zoom. It's a 5X optical zoom. Tetra prism. The word of the day is tetra prism. Tetra prism. That's so like, this is, that is their word instead of periscope. And like realistically, I think someone can correct me. It's not like massively different, I don't think, from like they're doing things their own way, but like it it is what we've been talking about, right? Of like how Apple can create they even spoke about it, the physical space inside of the larger phone to enable them to create this set of glass which enables the light to bounce off and it gives them a five times optical zoom. It's a one hundred and twenty millimeter focal length. Uh, and they've improved their optical image stabilization to help support this because that is another really important part of the process. Right. Because if you are increasing the zoom, any wobble will add for will will will, will reduce the quality of the image. Uh, and I saw this go by on threads from Sebastian Dewitt that in um, the five times zoom, Apple has. Uh, what Sebastian referred to as like a mini map that pops up on the top right hand corner of the screen, so you can see like where are you aiming at in the overall image? Like ah. Samsung have done this too. So you can kind of see like if you're pointing your phone out, but now you're five times zoom and now you can't find the thing you're supposed to be zooming at, you get kind of like a preview of the full frame so you could move it over to where it's supposed to be. Um, so this kind of just like helps you. Uh, but this is Apple's method of this. Five times, okay. Like, you know, I, people had said six. I kind of don't care between five and six. The thing I am... I have some pause over uh, is the, the we now have 1X, 2X, 5X. That's a big jump. And well, okay, so the other thing that's going on here is the 2X 
and this is a new photos feature, the 2X is now, you know, it, you can zoom right between 2X and 5X. And what it's doing is it's dynamically changing what part of the sensor it's using, right? Mm -hmm. The idea there is that um, it's it's like going between, um, what, 1X and 2X on the current mm -hmm. phone. So you've got this sort of like, um, you know, how do we use the sensor and then we process the image. But I believe what happens when you tap on the 2X, I think it is, is you get the like 24, 28, or 35 millimeter focal lengths, or maybe that's tapping on the 1X. Yeah. Anyway, so what they've done is- I think it's is, on the 1X. I yeah. I think it's on the 1X. No, that's right. So they've got this. So what they're doing with all of this is they're, they're doing this very odd thing where they are placing presets in the zoom into the 48 megapixel sensor. Mm -hmm. essentially um so that instead of like zooming to a, a 1.4x or whatever you just say 35 millimeter <laughs> or 28 yeah. millimeter or 24 millimeter and they, they it stops and they actually it like pops up and then it goes to the x equivalent after a after a second um yeah between two and five i don't I don't know. I don't know what it's doing. I don't doing. think you've got anything other than cropping. I, I, yeah, they, right. Because they didn't say anything, and there doesn't appear to be anything. And I feel like if they were doing anything fun, there'd be a three X in there as well. Yeah. you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I, you're right. I don't think there would just be those buttons. You're just going into super I think zoom you're just cropping. mode. Super zoom. And so I, we'll see how that that plays out. I will say you you touched on something. Like the thing I am actually most excited about is Apple gave me exactly what I wanted, which was stuff that that 48 megapixels sensor can do that's new so one is the focal length that sounds yes. cool i'm intrigued to see what that's like that's right but there is now 48 megapixel heath yes yeah right right so i can take a more usable 48 megapixel right. it doesn't have to just be raw to. yeah exactly yep. right that's a big, and, big but the deal. thing i am most excited about super high resolution 24 megapixel photos thank you yes this is what i wanted right like I wanted something that was enabled by this larger sensor always. And I feel like this is what I was hoping for. Something I didn't know what it was, but this I think is going to be that thing of like using the 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 full data that it has available and being able to take a crop in and give me something that's like somewhere in the middle. Great. Like this I'm very excited about this. So explain this to me is that the the idea here that you would you're gonna get a 24 megapixel image out, but it's using the use. It's using more of the sensor of that. The way I understood it, okay. from the way that they explained it, is that they are taking. You know how they take all the images that they're taking. Yep. Right. They take like seven million images per photo or whatever it mm -hmm. is. Right. But that they are taking information from the full 48 megapixel and laying that into the photonic engine. So you will get a higher quality image, but right. you're using, in the pipeline, you're using other parts of it to clean up that image and make it look the best it can be. But that they are taking the 48 megapixel data and using that to create a higher quality image on the other side at of 24 it. megapixels so but at based, 24 based megapixels. on all 48 megapixels instead of saying nope we're gonna flatten this down to a 24 megapixel sensor and take a picture instead it's capturing some portion of the 48 megapixel scan uh image and then running it through the pipeline yeah okay can i read you from apple's website yeah sure uh, the new photonic engine combines the best pixels from a super high resolution image with another that's optimized for light capture. So you automatically get 24 megapixel photos. That's twice the resolution than before for everyday shots of extra detail. So like the 48 megapixel photos are not really usable in most circumstances because they need more light, right? But now they're able to take data from those images and process it into something that is the new default as well, which is right. 24 megapixels. But I'm also really happy that I can create a uh, Heath file of a 48 megapixel image, mm -hmm. which I'm hoping will be easier to get to in the camera app, um, to just enable me to take a simple image in the camera app without having to use a third party in situations where I could maybe take a nice landscape. It looks to me... Changing everything and, up. And this was just a glance, I have to check, but it looks to me like what they've done is they've laid into the still photo area what used to just be in the video area, 
which is information yes. about what's being captured so that you can then tap on it tap and it. change what you're capturing. That's what I want. I think that's what's in there. I saw something like that. I didn't get a chance to use it, but it sure looks like that's in there. Okay. How about this one? They are now, we've gone so far with portrait mode that they are now using machine learning to detect, is this a thing that I can do portrait mode on? And if it is, you don't have to be in portrait mode. It's just going to capture depth depth data Fantastic. And, unless you and lets you make it a portrait so it, basically everything is a portrait mode if it can be but well it, it's cinematic mode right but in a way it's like that that function of cinematic mode it, where you can change the stuff around right but the but difference all the time the difference yeah. is between being in portrait mode and not being in portrait mode seems to be that if you're in portrait mode you see the portrait effect in the background and if you're not you don't but they still try to capture it and if they capture it, then when you edit it later, you can make it portrait mode if you want to. And then there's the adjustable depth of field thing where they'll say, no, 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 I've got the whole texture map here. I want to be I want to be back there and focus on that, not on this thing that it was focused on in the foreground. Even though, you know, obviously it's a phone camera image, it's all focus, but it, it will artfully blur the part that you want to artfully blur, even if it's the foreground instead of the background. So there's, it's just, we've come a long way with the depth data that's being captured. Now they're just like, look, we're just going to capture it, right? Because you might want it later. And it's just not a problem. That's that's what the heat format does, is it enables all that depth data to ride along with the image. And uh, so they're just going to capture it. And great right like yeah that is a kind of flexibility that i want and my hope would be here that i'll never need to choose to do portrait mode ever again right in theory or at least that's because i think if apple's machine learning can detect something it can detect a person right like i feel like well, if yeah. it can't do that at this point i don't know what's it's, going on it's literally um, looking at depth data from the lidar scanner i imagine and saying yeah, yeah there's a there's enough here for me to capture and that there's some instances where it's like yeah, i'm not gonna fantastic. bother yeah i think it's a, i think it's a good idea um, but then also that yeah. you can you can like if there were two people you could change who the focus was on yeah. like all that kind of stuff I think that's nice fantastic I shouldn't have to make a choice I feel like for that like it is machine learning use the machine learning and it's doing it and I think that's awesome sound like there's a new smart HDR system as well going on they they made okay. a bunch of tweaks under the hood it sounds like to the the photographic pipeline um, I'm really hoping here. that that I'm good. this is the year that I wanted last year camera wise. Like mm. uh, I, I, they've shown me enough stuff here where I'm like, I am intrigued about a lot of this, and there are some things here that I really wanted. Now the five times optical zoom, I still reserve a bit of judgment on, but to be honest, three times I think was too much in a lot of instances for me. So I'll still have that that like that pseudo 2x like the way that it works will be fine and then maybe i'll be able to take pictures of things i could never take pictures of before because of the 5x zoom so maybe i'll benefit from that um and for pros uh 4k 60 pro res log encoding for color and spatial video capture for vision pro yeah so the 4k 60 they said it was if you're using a usb so you'll be able to do a usb 3 outboard recording device for right. video capture which is pretty wild as an idea okay. and you'll be able to do that and then yeah we we speculated a lot about iphone being able to capture something for vision pro and those two camera lenses um it's the ultra wide i think and the and the and the regular uh the that mini. are being used here um but they are not very far apart but they are apart and apparently Apple has decided that it's you know good enough for them to say you can do spatial video capture. You're capturing a stereo video image and uh, that will be viewable on Vision Pro. I also wonder if at some point that's a, that's one of these like next month kind of things. It's a later this year, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if there'll be some other methods of sort of like tilt the phone to have a little bit of a depth effect or something on that spatial video. But it's I also like a Vision Pro feature. With all of the sensors and AR kit and all that kind of stuff, you could do something with that on the phone. Sure. There must be something. It's not going to be as affecting, but you could at least play it back and see what you've shot in some kind of oh, approximation. For, for sure. But I, I feel like, yeah, you'll be able to tilt the camera or something and, it, yeah. and it'll sort of like extrapolate uh, something, yeah. something like that. I don't know. We'll see. So these phones, the Pro phones, like all the phones, got USB-C. 
Um, on the Pro phones, they got USB 3 support, so 10 gigabit second. With an optional cable um, not in the box, which I think is an interesting decision for a $1,000 phone that they could have maybe just sprung for the USB for, 3 cable. For pros. They did, for pros. Yeah, for the pros. Um, but yeah, we mentioned that. Uh, I realize now we mentioned that was part of the chip, but that is part of the USB-C story. Uh, AirPods Pro got USB-C, but it doesn't appear that you can buy the case on its own. Oh, interesting. Disappointed about. That's too bad. Because I don't really want to buy a new AirPods Pro, but I do really want them to have USB-C, and maybe that's the decision that they're deciding to play with people like me. Mm-hmm. Uh, EarPods! The EarPods have been done, have been updated, so you can get USB-C Thank EarPods. Goodness. And there is a $30 Lightning to USB-C adapter. Sure. <laughs> Great. Of course there is. The uh, 15 Pro starts at $9.99. Same price. The Pro Max starts at $11.99. Same price. Which is a higher Asterisk. starting price. <laughs> yes, yeah, a higher starting price, yep. but... 256 is now the base. I think that's, it's not awesome, but it's fine, right? Like, I think that's fine. What they didn't do is raise the price and have the base price be the the base storage. They basically eliminated yeah. the lower storage tier. So to st- you do have to go in at 11.99 and not 10.99, but what you're getting for 11.99 is what you got for 11.99 last year. So yeah, it's so like better than expected, I would say, in that they didn't yeah. really, say, they raised the base, even, but not raise the price technically by spec. Yeah. So I haven't even dared to look at the pricing uh, outside of America right now because it's just been too much. What I heard in the UK, I, I was, I, I'm sure that it's more expensive. I was sitting <laughs> with, I was sitting with UK people who actually were surprised that it was, uh, that the pricing in the UK was pretty decent. Um, at, so huh. maybe, maybe so. I don't know. So it's two fifty six, five twelve, and a terabyte on the Pro Max. I think they're still doing their one to one pounds to dollars conversion. So eleven ninety nine. Yeah, I thought the, this is hilarious to me. The way that they have dealt with this, because I, I, I was like, hang on, a terabyte was there before. They just got rid of one of the options <laughs> on the Pro Max. Yeah, they didn't, and there's not four. There's just three now. Yeah, and that's that. That's pretty funny to me. That's pretty funny. But you're me. paying. You're you're paying a major uh, tax as you always are because. Eleven ninety nine pounds is fifteen hundred dollars for the uh, yeah. for that Pro Max, but the VAT is fine, really. Like whatever, it's when it's over the twenty percent difference is when it when it kind mm. of grinds my gears a bit. But All right, economic headwinds must have I don't know died you know, down. Who could tell? Who can tell? This episode is brought to you by FitBod. When you're looking to change your fitness level, it can be hard to know how to get started. That's why I'm happy to let you know that FitBod is both an easy and affordable way to build a fitness plan that is just for you. Everybody has their own path when it comes to personal fitness, which is why FitBod uses data to make sure they customize things to suit you exactly. They have built powerful algorithms that's going to learn about you, your goals, your training ability, any equipment that you have, how much you're working out, what you did last time, and all of this is going to create a dynamic custom plan based on your experience and the exercises you are performing. This is all inside of an app that makes everything super easy to to learn. One of the ways they do this is with their high quality HD video tutorials shot from multiple angles. They have over 1,400 of these video tutorials inside of the app. Make sure that learning everything is a breeze. This is something that I care about when I'm learning a new exercise. I want to make sure that I've got it down before I start doing it, before it comes part of my repertoire, because they really do mix it up. You're trying new things out. They're mixing up the exercises that you're doing along with the muscle groups that you're using, the sets, the reps, and the weight over time. This is to increase your overall strength and keep your body sharp. This is what FitBod is all about, but it also keeps your sessions fresh and fun by mixing things up so it doesn't become stale. Basically, FitBod know that superior results are achieved when a workout program is tailored to you exactly. So you don't want to overwork muscles. You don't want to underwork muscles. That's when your results are going to be held back. So FitBod tracks your muscle fatigue and recovery to design a well-balanced workout routine. It integrates with your Apple Watch. I love the way that this works. So if I'm familiar with the exercises that I'm doing, I'm able to advance through them all there and I can change my sets and reps on the watch if I want to. Uh, It also integrates with Wear OS and apps like Strava, Fitbit, and Apple Health. Personalized training of this quality can be expensive, but FitBod is just $12.99 a month or $79.99 a year. You can get 25% off your membership by signing up today at fitbod.me slash upgrade. So go now and get your customized fitness plan at fitbod.me slash upgrade. That is F-I-T-B-O-D dot me slash upgrade for 25% off your membership. Our thanks to FitBod for their support of this show and Relay FM. 
Let's talk about the iPhone 15. So, you know, we've yeah. spoken about a bunch of things, but there are a couple of parts here. Um, you know, one thing that I mentioned, the camera, it gets the 48 megapixel camera. It has the 24 megapixel kind of like um, high resolution it, default. It has, last, really year's, it has, has last year's pro camera, essentially, in, in mm-hmm. that way. It's got the, that 48 megapixel sensor and the 24 MP mode and the, yeah, all those things. So I'm very happy about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has, um, like the Pro Phone did, I didn't mention it, Ultra Wide Band Gen 2. Right. They're not calling which, it the U2 chip because they would have to pay Bono for that. Mm-hmm. It works from up to three times further and has an integration with Find My. So, like, you can use the precision finding yeah, for if, your friends. If you lose your great. friends in your couch cushions, you can find them. You can them. find them. Now you know exactly where they are on the couch mm-hmm. cushions. That's super. Uh, but the thing that we are expecting that they would do, they did. Dynamic, Dynamic Island. Island. Yeah, I. You right. know, I, people can go back and consult the record, but like there were there were people who were saying, "Oh, Dynamic Island is a pro feature. They're not going to bring that ne- to the regular phone next year." And I remember saying very clearly, "They will absolutely bring it to the regular phone next year." Yeah. Because they don't want it to be the touch bar. They want it to be everywhere. They like this feature. They really like it. And they want good. everyone to have it. And so now with 15, all the phones have the Dynamic Island, which I think will actually help that feature a lot because there will be many, many more phones and ultimately basically all the iPhones will have it. And that will also spur developers to do better with the Dynamic Island. Mike, I have some hands-on with the iPhone 15. Um, of course you do. Uh, very smooth. All those rough edges are, are are worn out. It's it feels really good in the hand because they they took their kind of like red angles and just like they're all super smoothed out now. It does feel really nice. The colors, everybody gets to have their own opinion about colors. I think they are really disappointing in that they are very pastel. They're very pale. Um. It, th- they're very you could say subtle and i know that the one the the color on the back of the phone people put cases on them you don't see that anyway the one part of the design that i think looks really cool is the um the raised glass camera bump area has this color infusion they call it and it's real like it doesn't look like a like on the yellow phone um, which I spent the most time with. They've done it to the whole back of the glass, right? But maybe it's just more visible in that area. It's it's the for me, it's in that little raised part that um, is. I had a very limited amount of time with this, but the thing that struck me That's about like, it they, was they, they said it's the whole thing, but maybe it shows more. It some, shows like, more because it's got that extra depth, and it yes. isn't. So uh. so the co- the glass doesn't appear to have color on the top of it, and it doesn't appear to have be a a slab of colored glass if it makes sense it Mm -hmm. sort of looks Mm -hmm. like there's color in it so oh okay i'm seeing some images here i see what you mean. see what i mean that's a very cool look yeah so that part that part of it i really like and there's an argument to be made that since that's the part that people actually see (laughs) huh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. the Put most the interesting in yeah. part of those. That said, personal opinion, I think that they're real, real boring. <laughs> and that's all. I mean, what can I say? They're I think they're real boring. Pastel. They are very pastel in they're a very, way that very they pale, haven't been before. Pale color, yeah. and that's what they've decided to go with. So the color, the colors are. Uh, woke up and thought it was Easter, <laughs> and they <laughs> and dyed a few eggs light pink and light yellow and. That's what we got. So not a fan of that, but uh, the color infusion thing on that on the on the camera square is uh, it's actually striking. It's very interesting looking, and it feels great in the hand. And that thing, honestly, Mike, um, I know we've got a couple other things to talk about here that are in both, but we've saved them. Um, at the end of before they go after the Pro Phone, at the end of the iPhone 15 segment, I thought to myself, "That's a really good phone. Like that's a really good phone." And we know knowing what was to come. I thought to myself, I increasingly feel the differentiation of these two product lines and feel like most people don't need the pro phone like we nerds do. And anybody who cares about X, Y, or Z will do it. But like $7.99, I got a, I got a, a PR pitch, uh, which I guess I'm going to validate right now today from somebody who pointed out that they track iPhone prices based on 
um, constant dollars, so factoring in inflation. And according to them, this is the most favorable brand new, like regular iPhone model, uh, most affordable since 2007. Since 2007. Um, and that's because we've had a lot of inflation, but they've kept that price at seven ninety nine. dollars Huh. Is that because of also the features in it, or is it purely just based on... Well, I mean that for seven ninety nine. That for the in for in terms of versus inflation, it's just what it is. But, um, but I came away thinking there's a lot of really good features in this. Like when with the forty eight megapixel sensor, with the with the enhanced image pipeline, all those things. You don't get the big zoom camera, but you get all of those other things. You get the satellite. We haven't even mentioned they they did say they they kicked the can another year about what will happen to all of last year's phones in two years? What are they going to have to pay to keep the satellite features, et cetera, et cetera. But they did add that roadside assistance feature in on top of that. Um, all of that, and and you get all of that, the dynamic island, and it's $7.99 or $8.99 for the larger one. It's just like, it's a really good deal. And not not everybody, not everybody needs the pro phone. And I like the fact that while we make a lot of hay talking about Apple selling $1,000 phones, which they absolutely do, and a lot of us buy them, I like the fact that the 15 at $799, that's a really good deal on a really good phone. That is not a, uh, I got last year's model, and it's kind of like, it's not. It, it's it's a, yes, it is sort of last year's model in ways, but it's a it's a pretty good deal phone in its own right i just i just wanted to say that that i i i was more impressed with the proposition of what the iphone 15 is than i think i expected to be i'm i'm pleased and excited that they added the camera and the and the dynamic island i think those two features are really mm -hmm. really good like to be put yeah. into this and the, and the whole new pipeline awesome. that goes along with it which you know yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna also say well, wait a second. If that pipeline works on the 15, shouldn't it also be on the 14 Pro in a software update? And maybe it will. Maybe they will. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe that's a feature that tw the 24 megapixel and some of the other photo features that are not specific to the 15 Pro will also be on the 14 Pro since it's the same chip. I don't know. I, d I do not know. Uh, still at seven ninety nine and yeah. eight ninety nine. Good they deal. They spent quite a bit of time, uh, which I love, trying to like bang people over the head with the idea that the a bigger screen is better. I thought it was very funny. Like there was quite a bit of like, look how much more message you can read, and look how much more website right. you can read. You know, or bigger like, text okay, if we, you want bigger text. Yeah. yeah, we get it. All it's right, nice. We, you know, yeah, sure. I thought that was very funny. Um. Anything else on the iPhone 15? Like, there were a bunch of features in this that we've already spoken about, right? That like USB C is in there. Like, there are, there are things that are going on, but I think that's probably it for that, right? I think so. I think so. Okay. Same availability, right? For sale on Friday, yeah. arriving the following Friday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not that there's a ton much more to say about the Apple Watch. Well, I've got a couple of things. I got to try Double Tap. Okay. Tell me about that. So they said, you know, they're using various sensors, including even the heart rate sensor to try and get a sense of when you're double tapping. I tried it. They put, they put a watch on me and they had me do a go walk through a bunch of things. And it was, um, sort of like with the vision pro, it was one of those things where I had to kind of learn the exact right gesture. So my, my default when I, imagined what I would be doing was a little softer and a little faster than it wanted. So, and also one of the things that it's looking for when it's doing its machine learning is it's looking for a clear signal that you're double tapping and not just moving your hands around. And, uh, it helps if you're, they actually had me like put my arm down and then they called me but they wanted my arm down so that I lifted up to look and see who was calling me. And then I double tapped and that worked. And so that, that suggests to me that, you know, part of the training here is it's a lot easier for it to know that you're double tapping if it, you're coming out of a gesture and, you know, where you're picking up your watch and you're looking at it. And they're like, aha, they, he just looked at the watch right. and now is he going to double tap? Um, but even without that, like looking at the, at the watch face and double tapping to get to the widgets, 
and then double tapping to scroll one by one through the widgets. I got the hang of it. It was, like I said, a little slower than I expected, and I was a little firmer with the double tap of my thumb and my index finger than I thought originally that I was going to be. I, I think the Vision Pro is much more subtle about this because it can literally see your hand, where as this has to intuit, the watch has to intuit this from its place on your wrist. But I was able to get it working. And I think where it's going to shine is not in like scrolling through widgets. I think where it's going to shine is you got an alarm going and your hands are full or they showed like the guy with flour on his hands and stuff like that, where you can just mm -hmm. go, you know, tap, tap, beats a nose tap any day to do a little finger tap. Um, so I think it's I think it's a cool idea, and once I got the hang of it, it worked pretty well. So I'm um, I'm kind of into it. I don't think it's enough for me to personally upgrade at this point, but I think it's a great idea. And the idea that this is basically going to be in every Apple Watch going forward over time, uh, and yeah. that they've they've been able to do something that will have some nice value for people whose hands are full who don't have access to both hands yeah. and can't navigate that thing. I think that's a uh, I think it's smart. So this is, I assume, an adaptation and refinement of the assistive touch features that they added, which enable for some of this stuff on I, previous watches. I think that's it. They, they have they have refined this to the point where they are building it into the standard UI, and yep. it's for everybody. And that maybe it's like it's 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 prime time enough with the power of the S nine that they can do a much better job of detecting it. That's so probably it. They're that willing the, to roll it out. That the ML model has been improved yeah. and they and they feel better about it. Um, one thing that it does do is when it detects it, it actually puts a little thing up that says "I detected the mm -hmm. double tap," and then it does the thing, which is interesting right what they, they they want you to know that what you're about to see is done because we think you double tapped with your fingers and and that's yep. a uh like that's a choice they made they didn't want it to be an invisible thing they wanted the ui to say yes a double tap was received and then it does the thing that the double tap is supposed to do. So it's not quite instantaneous. It is sort of like the double tap icon lights up and then the and then the event happens. And look, obviously, I was, you know, struck by like, oh, yeah, I know that. I know that. I did that with the Vision Pro on. I know what that means. You know, like I've experienced that gesture. And I'm I'm guessing this is like, oh, the, this is like a standard gesture now. It's going to be a standard gesture. The Apple Watch does it. Vision Pro does it, right? Like this yeah. idea of pinching your 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 thumb and, and finger together, like that's what it's going to be. And maybe this is what it will be called on Vision Pro because I don't think they called it this idea i don't know i don't know i've got a wild idea too which is maybe future macs okay. that have webcams in them will also be able to do remember you can do your thumbs up to get the fireworks mm -hmm. and all of that what if you can do a double tap and if it can see you you do a little double tap with your fingers and it pauses your music or whatever could be Eye tracking on they, the they mac could, baby let's go they could let's try go. they could try some stuff like that it's possible um the other thing i got to do is i got to touch the fine woven uh watch bands ah uh, yes 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 so I expected, based on their description, for them to be more fabric-y at a glance, and they're not. Knowing what I know about Apple's watch band styles, I looked at them and thought, oh, those look like the leather bands. They're just not. They are a little more suede-y, um, but they're real close. Like, if, okay, cool. if you're a big... Uh, fan of leather watch bands. I am sure many companies will sell you leather watch bands for the Apple Watch um, and leather cases for your iPhone. But with a brief visit of the fine woven fabric, it looked close enough that I think that for a lot of people, mm -hmm. it will be a suitable replacement for the leather bands. Um you know, we'll we'll see how it goes, but I I thought they looked pretty good, and did not look dramatically different than the leather brand, bands that That's I've good. seen from Apple. Because I am a daily user and huge fan of the magnetic link, and when there were rumors that the mm -hmm. leather was going away, I thought that that watch band was on its way out. Right, so and they've kept they've the styles. It. They just replaced it with they the fine woven. styles. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the colors, but colors are colors. It doesn't really matter though. They come and go, the right? They they yeah. they come and yep. go, and will and will change along the way. I I bought a, a, I refreshed my leather one. Um, I got like a blue leather one a, a few months ago, so mm. I wouldn't have bought a new one of these anyway. So right. maybe by the next time that they refresh them color wise, there might be a color for me in there. Maybe so. And I guess that's um, a good segue. 
Yeah, let's just w- one last thing. Okay. So we'll just say like, uh, yeah, Series 9 gets the S9 chip, mm-hmm. ultra wide band, so you can do the finding of the phone and the watch and they can do the precision finding Everybody together. finds everybody else, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And they increased, they, 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 they made some refinements to display. They increased Brighter. the brightness. Brighter, that's a, so, that's yes. a win. In both Apple in both Watch that. Ultra 2. Ultra 2. Gets all those same features, basically. S9, ultra wide band, and also a brighter, brighter display, brighter. which gets brighter. a new watch face. Brighter. End of story, which yeah. is just like very surprised. I mean, I, I'm excited because I want an Apple Watch Ultra, right? So like I'm buying an Apple Watch Ultra. Um, as Stephen texted me and said, you should have just bought an Apple Watch Ultra already. And yeah, I, was like, I guess yeah. so. I maybe waited for longer than I needed to. Um, but, you know, I... My point still stands that like I'm gonna wait it out. I have Zach has asked if I've ordered one already. I have not because I will be in the US of A, yeah, and so well, I have sorry. yet to work out how to make that work best for me when it comes to product ordering. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, I will be buying one of these. Uh, I'm super excited about it uh, because I'm ready. And you know, it, it, the Apple did what I wanted. Like I'm not gonna have a gold. But I will be able to get a natural titanium iPhone Pro Max yeah. and a titanium Apple Watch Ultra, and I expect they probably match together pretty nicely. I would expect so, um, yeah. And then I'll be happy. But yeah, I'm I'm surprised that they I'm surprised that they did it. Honestly, I'm surprised that there is a new Apple Watch Ultra considering. So here's maybe it's just the, the S9. Here's my theory. Know. Here's my theory is. Keep in mind, they had to plan this out before the product even is out there. I think they were like, all right, we're going to do the Ultra. And then next year, it's, okay, we got a, we got the new system and the chip coming in. You know, new system and package, SIP. They just called it SIP. Um, so yeah, I was like, I was confused about it. I was like, system on a pip? Like, what is this? What is this? I was very confused yeah, about this. system in a potato packet <laughs> it's a system in a potato <laughs> system in a potato uh, powers uh-huh. itself so they before the ultra is released they have to decide what they're doing with the ultra 2 and i think that that's what they decided is look we're, we're doing the s9 and ultra wideband and all these other things that are rolling into the series 9 so let's just rev the existing ultra in year 2 to do that and so it feels to me like Apple moves slowly enough that they didn't know one way or another how the Ultra was going to do in year one. So they just committed to year two being a let it ride and get it up to speed with the existing. Because the last thing you want is your high end Ultra watch to be behind the Series 9 in terms of your brand new system and package. Sorry, software and potato that your uh, <laughs> seldom indigo punch bowl. Um, mm-hmm. It is you got to have it there. So I I wonder if the Ultra Three will be the one where they're like, hey, everybody like the Ultra, let's get it done, right? Let's do something amazing. But maybe they just didn't commit in year two. They're like, look, all we're gonna do is put change the guts and otherwise just keep it the same. It sure does seem like that's the way, because <laughs> like I, I am surprised about the fact that yeah, but like hey, why not just yes, no, no, whatever they've done it. This is it. Apple Watch. Ultra they don't have enough vapor. Two. They don't have enough vapor. Yeah, I guess so. To deposit black on uh the titanium there. It's all being used for the black iPhone Pro. So they can't. But yeah. I've all deposit uh, like the the, there are many ways they could have named it. This is the one they went with. Ultra Apple two. Watch Ultra Two. I, that's the name I would have picked. Ultra Two. It's the name yeah. I would have picked. I think it's a good name. I think it's a good name. We don't need series. Yep. Series is for the basics, and the Ultra is now here, and this is the Ultra 2. Do we need... I just don't want anything else, right? Like, Ultra 2 is great. I don't want it to be yeah. Ultra Series 2, Ultra Series 9. Ult- I like, fewer words, please. Ultra 2, great. Stamp of approval from me. I love it. Apple spent a bunch of time, I would say at one point, too much time, talking about their 2030 carbon initiative so, program. So you know how sometimes you get inside a parenthesis and then there's another parenthesis inside of it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're in the middle of the Apple Watch demo. <laughs> I've got to say, man. And then there's that a video comedy sketch about- That video, I initiative? wanted to claw my face off. I was, you know when you feel that like, what is it called? Like uh, secondhand embarrassment? Mm-hmm. What was that? Like, what was that? I I gotta say, I I'm gonna dis- like I'm it. gonna disagree with you. And the reason is, I don't want to see one more pat on the back, 
we're so great. We really care video from Apple about how they're changing the world and they want to leave it better than they did and all that. And they have done so many of those videos. But this was still and I, well, And I'm sick of them. So here they're aware that that's what they're doing. And so they try to puncture it with some comedy. And you take it the way you like it. I saw a bunch of people in uh, various places while it was going on making comments about like, oh, Tim Cook has to act, but he's so wooden and it's so bad. And I'm like, no, no, no. The video knows that. That's why it's funny is they keep cutting back to Tim mm-hmm. Cook. It's a, Every time they cut back to Tim Cook, it's a comedy line because it's like, oh, right. Tim Cook's in this video looking blankly off screen. I, so it worked for me in that in that way. I think it was too long, and I think some of the points were very strange. And I think I recognized one of the actors who was in it, not Octavia Spencer, one of the people who was an Apple employee. I think I was like, I think I've seen her in something before. But you know what? Yeah, I, I give I think them she was full. Abba Elementary, maybe. Uh, uh, I don't know. There were there were a, there were a couple people there where I was like, I, I, these people seem sort of familiar. But here's the thing: I give them credit for trying to do something that was a little less obviously just so self-serious while also like literally basically doing a pitch for their carbon initiative mm-hmm. um, and saying that we're not kidding here. I, I can't wait for the first com- uh, organization to come out and say that Apple is still, I mean, they tried to head it off and say like, no, no, no. When we plant trees, we mean it because there's so much carbon offset. That's BS, right? That it's just, it's yeah. not, it's, it's a, it's a fake way of, uh, of uh, of saying that you're uh, reducing carbon, but you're really not. And a- Apple was trying to say, no, 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 <laughs> we we mean it. We like good projects. Good. They said literally good carbon offsets, not the bad kind, the good kind. It's like okay, still somebody's going to write a report about that. And what they didn't say, and the ways oh, that they blunted some of the things. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to do this. I, I, I'm glad that it wasn't a, you know, inspirational, oh, we're going to change the world thing. And it was more like, yeah, yeah, everybody says this, but do you really mean it? And they're like, no, no, we really mean it. So that part is fine. I find it extremely curious that it was done in the context of the Apple Watch, although I understand that the Apple Watch is the f- Series 9 is that first fully carbon neutral product. It just seemed weird. Like we shifted gears and then we kind of like had to unshift for a while because there was the video and then there were like Lisa Jackson's details about the Apple Watch on top of that. And I think the message is perfectly fine. I think they're saying, look, we are starting the process of shipping products that are fully carbon neutral because we are going to get to be this this point in 2030 where we're completely carbon neutral. And any of us who've covered Apple for a long time, we've seen it, right? Like we've seen what happens mm-hmm. here, which is they announce it and they start with a little bit. They did that with the after Greenpeace was yelling at them. They started what 2010? Uh, a little s- card where they would show yeah what, what was the, going and like oh yeah we're gonna do better and like that became a huge part of what they do mm-hmm. and this feels a little like that which is like from now on it's all gonna be about what products get the little green leaves on them um, and are are declared uh, carbon neutral and I think it's also funny that. Uh, one side effect of this is that if you buy the wrong Apple Watch band, you do not get <laughs> You're green leaves. The environment. You get no leaves. Yeah, you, no leaves for you. You're bad for the environment. All right, let me just t- talk about what I didn't like about the video Please. specifically, right? Like, I like the message, and it, and that was good. Like, I want them to talk about this stuff because I want to hear it. Like, I want to hear what they're doing. But, like, I thought the video sketch was too long. I didn't like the fact that there were a couple of Apple employees and then some comedians. So, like, there was, like, a real mismatch mm. with the comedy. Um, I... I didn't, and I what I I think the thing that a lot of the jokes just didn't land for me. I, I didn't find it particularly funny personally, but the thing that frustrated me about it was like, I know what you're saying about like you don't want to hear this like oh look how good we are, but they literally wrote a sketch. Oh where yeah, they where where. Apple decided that Mother Nature was going to be impressed by them. Yeah. So, like, oh yeah, there is some like, w- like that is so strange guess, to me. It's like a thing. I guess what? Yeah, I I totally get it. I guess I preferred the tone because it was um, it was at least trying to be a little bit humorous. Not yeah, yeah. just ponderous, but it doesn't change the fact that they but then are they just patting themselves it up by on their recapping back. it all afterwards in yes. the serious way. Anyway, so it's like, well, yeah, just do what. Well but anyway, uh, it was. I w- 
I liked to get this kind of detail in, even though it is funny, like as we say, right, that if you get a specific type of watch band, then it's not good. I actually do like that they're being open about that, like in the presentation. Like if you get this one and this one, you're carbon neutral. But if you get this one, it's not. Sorry. Right? And I thought that was cool. <laughs> uh, I also liked that, and I think I like those new Nike bands with like the recycled color uh, material inside of them look amazing. I love those. Those looked really um, good. They look so good. Uh, so, and yeah, they're doing some stuff with Hermes too. Um, yeah, you know, like I'm happy for this. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know, really know much about this 2030 thing, so I think they they chose the right time to talk about it. Um, and I I like the carbon neutral thing, like on the boxes, like I think all well, that kind of cool, and on the website. So like, there are, like if you go to the Apple Watch bands, they they note which ones are carbon neutral um, on on the website. Um, I'm I'm a little bit intrigued because like some of the like, so like the fine woven one isn't and wasn't that no just, fine woven you know, fine woven like, is all just not being leather right it's the it's the yeah. it's the we're not as but bad see, as this leather. This is the funny thing. I think I don't remember us to mention this on this show or I mentioned it on Connected. I know I mentioned it on one of them of like people were like oh uh, leather is bad for the environment and it, but like there's a thing that I've been looking into where like if you're trying to make synthetic leathers. It's not necessarily good for the environment, right? Like from a carbon perspective, because it's like vinyl or something. It's not. Yes, and it's got to have. It's and like so, special. The special supple plastic that mm-hmm. is the worst kind of plastic. Yes. So they have kind of proven to me a point of like a thing they wouldn't say, which was like it's actually not good to just be killing animals for the leather, right? Mm-hmm. Like which they didn't say that. They didn't say that. I thought they, they were going to say, say first off, the cows <laughs> are not great for yes. the environment. And secondly, the- but I think they didn't want to talk about the animals no. because th- there is no reason why now all of a sudden they, they won't have decided they, to stop right. killing all they, these they'd rather, all the leather. Yeah, they'd rather just talk about the environment. And that's and that's yeah. fine. I, I will also say um, I love that they're using like re- recycled yarn. In some of the bands, that looks yeah. pretty nice. I've got some socks that are made out of that. They look gorgeous. But like they're... just the recycled in general, yeah. right? The recycled cobalt, like all of this stuff. They're, yeah. they're recycling more and more materials in all of the products than they have before. So they are continuing. And like I, it was a, a very like it was funny to me where it was like you know they do it. They did like the whole thing, like talking about this, and Tim was talking in their little garden about how great it is about the Apple Watch and the carbon neutral product. And he's like, and now the iPhone. And that made me laugh because it was like, oh boy, is that your problem? Mm. Right? Like trying to make the iPhone carbon neutral is going to be so yep. hard. Yep. yep. And something I was really intrigued about and I want to know more about and I want to see if I can find it is their shipping. They'll talk a lot about shipping. Putting things on boats rather than planes because it's better. I'm like really intrigued again with the iPhone how they manage how they will manage that part because the reason you put things on planes is a supply chain thing because it gets there fast yes and so that has got to be a big part about iphone stock management S- is speed right i i think i i think what they're probably doing is trying to start production of all of these products sooner because the truth is you can ship them if you produce them in time one of the reasons now yes over yep. the long run you have to manage for demand and that can change but in the short term i i think that the argument here that's is that's a way to do it i it would have just surprised me if that was the way that they managed to do it i think but it's got yes, to be some of it. To do I, it i think some of it has to be them looking at, at themselves in the mirror and saying well one way we get closer to carbon neutral is we got to have more discipline on calling the hardware final earlier in the process so we can put them on those ships and not mm-hmm. Because I remember this happened a couple of years ago. It might have been when the when the pro was delayed, where they were talking about how like everything was going on planes, and mm-hmm. y- you know if you make them because they make them in advance. If you make enough of them in advance and give yourself enough leave time, you can put them on a boat <laughs> and they'll get across the ocean and then you can take care of it. But you have to do that work and that will be less in, in, of an impact on the environment. So um, maybe that's what they're doing is 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 making the effort that's how i read that statement was we are going to make more of an effort 
to ship more of our products on ships instead of on airplanes. And there will still be, yes, there will still be, you order a Mac, you custom configure it, it's shipped on an airplane. But I think what they're really thinking is all the base models and, you know, the standard iPhone models where they're making many, many, many of them, millions of them in advance, that's the kind of thing where you're not going in just-in-time analysis of your demand. You know you're going to have demand pretty accurately just make them and put them on ships and do more of that in order to make the process less of a negative impact on the environment. That's probably what they're up to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I feel like that's it. Yeah. I, I think that's the, that's the iPhone and Apple. I did, for this year. I did not have the, the uh, carbon 2030 initiative thing on my bingo card, but there it was. They, they definitely were going to be, that won't be the end of it. Right. Without those, those little leaves. The leaves are popping up here and there, and if uh, yeah, if you get a certain kind of band, no leaf for you, and that's just how it's, it's real gonna, time follow up from underscore be. on yes. the from the new like for the early for the update and environment page on oh, Apple's nice. website. Uh, an Apple Watch has twelve kilograms of carbon, uh, like its carbon uh, footprint. For the Ultra, yeah. For the Apple Watch Ultra, yes. The iPhone 15 Pro is 66 kilogram carbon footprint, so it's roughly 5.5 times higher for the iPhone. It will be a lot Ooh, longer. For baby, them to do that's that. gonna be hard. Although, to do. although you know, one of the things that's going in their benefit here is that the electrification of China is happening very fast, and that helps them because that's the energy that they're using in their plants. So the more of that they can get and get access to, the better. But yeah. It's uh you know it's it 2030 is still a ways out so they got they got time they got time All right that's it for this week's episode we'll be back next week I'm sure we'll be talking about uh the OS releases because that's uh yes next week. I guess we will right along with yeah along with any more information we find out between now and then uh, about the what was announced today as well as little tidbits so i'm sure we'll be following oh, yeah. up on that's those. release day and you'll uh, you'll be in memphis tennessee you'll be in the usa for yeah. that that episode i will too. be in the us of a Ooh. i'll be a-okay in the us of a okay uh, you can send your feedback follow up and send in your ask upgrade questions about Please. anything that you've read about and also about ios and ipad os and watch os over upgradefeedback.com and we'll get to as many of those as we can next time. You can check out Jason's work. I'm sure there'll be lots of it at sixcolors.com, and you can hear his shows at theincomparable.com and here on Relay FM. You can listen to me here on Relay FM and check out my work at cortexbrand.com. We are on social platforms. You can find uh, Jason on Mastodon. He's at Jason L on Zeppelin.flights. Uh, I am at iMike, I-M-Y-K-E on mike.social. You'll find the show as Upgrade at RelayFM.social. You can watch video clips of the show there. You can also see us on TikTok and Instagram. Where we are at Upgrade Relay on both. And YouTube, and YouTube as well. We are at Upgrade. We are Upgrade Relay on YouTube as well. We're on Threads. I'm iMike, I-M-Y-K-E. Jason is at Jsnell, J-S-N-E-L-L. Thank you to our members who support us of Upgrade Plus. Yes. You can get longer, ad-free versions of every single episode of Upgrade by going to getupgradeplus.com. Please go and donate to St. Jude. Go to stjude.org slash relay and find out more there. Thank you to ExpressVPN and FitBod for their support of this episode. And thank you for listening. Until next time. Say goodbye, Jason Snow. Goodbye, everybody.